years they've been out there. Not long after the birth of atomic energy, radioactive materials were distributed to industry and to schools and universities through President Dwight Eisenhower's Atoms for Peace program. The development of plans whereby such peaceful use of atomic energy would be expedited. These nuclear materials and associated technologies were also distributed to many countries throughout the world. The government made uh, plutonium beryllium sources as a compact source of neutrons for education and research, and then they branched into other, many other types of sealed sources, cesium-137 sources, cobalt-60 sources, all used for various industrial purposes. For more than 25 years, Los Alamos National Laboratory has been the only national recovery entity for excess sealed radioactive sources. The radioactive sealed source does serve a beneficial use in our society, but at the same time, um, accumulating these without a way to remove them at the end of life when they're no longer needed creates a certain risk and a threat to the public and that's the purpose of the OSR project. These sources contain elements like plutonium, americium, cesium, cobalt, and strontium that have been removed from agricultural, research, and industrial sites around the nation and now around the world. To date, 15,000 sources have been recovered from the general public. Which is a national effort funded by the National Nuclear Security Administration. The uh, goal of our project is to remove from the uh, domestic environment as much radioactive material um, as can be removed. That is to make sure that there is no excess and unwanted radioactive material in the environment which is not needed for commerce or industry um, such that that material would not fall into the hands of somebody who would use it in a malicious manner either in a terrorist event or in some <clears throat> other form that would cause injury to public health and safety. After 9-11 it became very clear that, that these excess and unwanted sources would become the stockpile from which a terrorist would draw his material if he was going to make a radiological weapon to be used in a terrorist event. And these sources were almost everywhere across the country. For example, on one recovery in Michigan, irradiated sources were removed from a university so their disposal would no longer be a problem to the school's administration. The same day in a hospital there, sources used in a medical scanner were also removed, eliminating the specter of local long-term storage. When you arrive on site, the first thing you do is you, you've pre-shipped equipment and drums, the, the tools get opened, the drums get inspected to make sure that they arrived at the site in good condition, they're usable. You open the drums, you inspect them, uh, the, the RCT inspects the working environment, the RCT is a rad control technician, he inspects our working environment to make sure that it's safe for the government employees to be there and, the, and their contractors to work in that environment. They may see things that we may not because we're in the thralls of actually trying to do a packaging and recovery. And so they'll watch us, make sure that we are safe both radiologically and also, you know, as an industrial hygiene type aspect, seeing if we're getting too close to things, if there's things we're going to be tripping over or anything like that. And they're uh, kind of an independent eyes for us to keep us safe. Plus, we are constantly inspecting each other and, and advising each other on, on safe handling protocols and making sure that things are stored in a way such that we're only dealing with one source at a time rather than dealing with 10 or 100. Our shielding will always be a minimal out in the field. So our biggest thing is time and distance. So when we identify the source, we go in quickly, we look at the information, a second person goes in and verifies that information, and then after we've gotten all the information, then we will actually handle the source to uh, start the packaging. Part of the information gathering is whether the source is, is considered special form by the Department of Transportation. It's a term that states that it is a stainless steel tube that we have that is field sealable and once it's sealed the sources that are inside are now considered special form. If the 
sources are already special form, we usually put them in what we call a bird feeder. It's a big plastic tube. Okay. We actually load the sources directly into there. Each one is swiped, and so we know what the uh, leak test out in the field is. And then from then those will get loaded into the drill. There are some states that on a particular day no longer have excess and unwanted radioactive material because either we've taken it or they've gotten rid of it by some other means. Taking a long time and a lot of effort, but it is something that has been refined and is something that is working very well. Uh, we are able to go out and one of the things that's very satisfying, you actually get to see something happening. We are doing something to help remove and enhance uh, the public safety and also national security. Working on the OSR project is the most satisfying work I have done in my entire professional career. And I believe all of my colleagues would agree that we have a vision of how the world should be. We have a mission that the Department of Energy has agreed to fund and to allow us to work on these problems. And it's extremely satisfying to go to a site, remove all the excess sources, and to know that that material is no longer going to be a threat to the public environment.